Pushing off on my mind Are you still thinking about me all the time? Hey tubers, this week I'm going to be answering some of your really big questions. Paint, what am I going to do with the paint? Motor, what type of motor am I going to be using? And batteries, what am I going to be powering this little mini with? Paint, what direction am I going to take? Well, I made it clear from the beginning, I'm not painting the car. All that I'm going to be doing is clear coating. Now there's a couple of reasons why I've chosen this path. One, I simply don't have the finances or the space to actually store this car if I stripped down and had the, and had the shell dipped, um, sandblasted or whatever you do. I don't have the skills to prep it myself. I don't have a car that can tow a car trailer, let alone a car trailer, to actually get it to a um, panel beater, sandblaster type place. So some have asked aesthetics first and then paint or paint first then aesthetics. Well look the roof liner is something that I've always wanted to do. I've owned a lot of minis, never put a roof liner in and never done all new seals and window seals and door seals and stuff like that. Um, plus when I do start moving it around to the engineers to get the motor fitted and stuff like that I'm going to need it sealed up so it doesn't get wet and I want to feel good about the project so I think this actually made me feel good about it and got me a really good start. Next, we've got the motor. I could go a Tesla motor, maybe a front motor out of a four wheel drive Tesla. I could call it a Tesla Mini. It'd certainly get a lot of clicks and it's a very clickbaity title. The likely path with the motor is a Hyper 9, the 120 volt unit. Now, there are a lot of other projects out there that have different types of motors different types of gearboxes and stuff like that. And the gearboxes are another consideration. Now there is one from GT Tooling down in Sydney, and that is an awesome idea. I absolutely love it. It's got a rear mounted motor with a drive shaft up through the middle of it. Then it's got a diff up the front, goes out to the front wheel. So it's a rear motor front wheel drive car. That is cool, I love it. It's probably on the highest of my wish lists for want to do in a perfect world. However, there's engineering requirements that probably render that option not useless, but certainly brings it down a couple of notches. It would allow me to put all the batteries under the bonnet probably, I would assume. I haven't measured that out. I might have to put one or two in the boot as well. So it would get the balance of the car very well sorted. That would definitely be an advantage going down the track. Um, it's also a very youtube -y thing, I guess. It hasn't been done that often. GT Tooling seem to be at the forefront of that conversion. They've done one or two, apparently. Uh, and it just it looks neat, okay? It's a, it's a well-finished product. They did do it on a moke, and I believe they used 12-inch wheels. So that would pick it up off the ground a little bit. So there might be some considerations there as well. Some other options are Moment Motors. That little blue Mini looks sick. A couple of Tesla batteries in the front. It does look like it's got a fully modified front end. I haven't even inquired about that because it does seem like it's it's a long way out of my price bracket and certainly not even close to DIY, something you, you could achieve in your local area, I guess you'd say. That said, I will definitely be drawing inspiration from that install. It is neat, it is clean, it is, it's tucked away. I really like that. Another potential option is Swindon Motors. Now they have an 80 kilowatt uh, crate motor I guess you'd say. That idea really excites me especially if it's bolt in. If someone can do this for a mini uh, it will in, it will open up the entire market. Much like now you can buy all the parts for a VW Beetle and just bolt them in. I see that happening in the future with minis and I hopefully this project leads the way with that. Another option is a mini gearbox. Now the boys over at My Electric Mini, link below, have done, a mock, I'm pretty sure it's just a mock-up, but they've got a mini gearbox. Uh, they've got the side cover and the clutch plate there. I don't think it's actually a running functioning uh, rig, but they've got the motor on top. That's another very accessible idea. I do see some drawbacks to that. It is just a weak gearbox. I don't think it can handle the torque from the electric motor, but very bolt-in, very accessible. So it'd be good to see the boys experiment with that a little bit more. Of course, there is the other option, and the option that I probably will end up following is using a gearbox diff combination out of another vehicle, a more modern vehicle, a stronger vehicle, something that can handle the torque. Now, I don't know what that product is. I haven't found it yet, but it would be neat 
to use a modern mini gearbox, maybe a six speed manual gearbox, it'd be very cool to actually retrofit that to the new electric motor and bolt it into an old car. I think there's something to that idea. So that's the motor gearbox combination that I've been thinking about. Last of all is the batteries. So the batteries, DIY or go out of the box. Now I have enough cells to do DIY in this car, but unfortunately they don't have the C rating and I think they'll be more of a liability than an asset to the project. Uh, they're, they're recycled cells, they're not new, they're not matched. There's lots of drawbacks to running a high amp application with DIY cells. So I definitely will be sticking with, you guessed it, Tesla modules. Now for the Hyper 9, I'll need five Tesla modules. I'll probably run with three in the front and then two in the boot. Unfortunately, the way I wanted to have the batteries down here on the floor, I don't think is gonna work. I don't think that's gonna be overly practical. I'm an adult, my head is touching the roof liner, my knees are up pretty high, so there's not gonna be a great deal of room back here. And if we sort of lift that up by another four inches, we're gonna run out of room. Also, mounting methods and stuff like that, if we hit a rock or something on the road, something could potentially come through the floor pan. So, you know, you can engineer around that, but I just don't think it's an ideal plan. It's a cool plan, but not ideal. So tubers, I probably didn't mention enough people. I probably haven't seen enough projects. Have you found any DIY conversions with the older minis? Please feel free to go over to the forum, register yourself on there if you're not already registered and leave a couple of comments, drop some photos, some links or whatever, or even do them in the description below. To all my new patrons, thank you very much. And if you feel like helping out the project, I would appreciate your support because without your support, I can't spend the time or the money on these types of projects. So, Tubers, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.